G'day, I'm Jake from Make Science Fun. Thanks for joining me today. Now, I'm a physics teacher, I'm a science teacher, and today I'm doing a video on Faraday's law and Lenz's law. Now, I'm gonna use some props and some equipment to help illustrate it. Uh, this is not gonna be like some high-end production with lots of um, effects or anything like that. Just a bit of a lecture um, with some real things. So let's go. Now, I've got a coil of wire here. Now, it's insulated wire. It looks like it's bare copper, but it's actually got like a golden enamel on it. And there's two ends of the coil. And at the moment, there is no magnetic flux. Now, not that you can see magnetic field lines. Well, there might actually be a small amount from the Earth. But anyway, there's basically no magnetic field lines traveling through this. There is zero magnetic field lines through this, so there's zero magnetic flux. Flux is basically the flow of magnetic field lines through a coil of wire. Now, I've got a giant um, like ammeter here, and so I'm now going to connect the two ends of that loop to the ammeter. Now again, there is no magnetic field through that coil, but I'm going to introduce a magnetic field through it. Are you ready? Here we go. Boom! Look at that! I've produced a voltage, and you can see it there, I'm gonna pull out, whoa! Voltage goes the other way, okay? Bring it in, and it sort of like goes up, and then it stops. Whoa! Goes that down, and then it goes back to zero. That's because Faraday's law says that when there is a change of magnetic flux, so going from zero to maximum, that you will produce a voltage. Now that voltage will produce a current, and you can see the current right there. But it only occurs when it's changing. So when I pull it out, yeah, that's a change. It goes from maximum to zero. Or when I put it in from zero to maximum, that's when you produce your um, voltage. But when there's no change, there's no voltage produced. So if I wanted to produce a continuous voltage, I'd have to like move it in and out like that. And basically, this is how most of the world's electricity is produced. Apart from solar panels, of course, or photovoltaic cells. Um, but you know, coal. Coal-powered fire stations spin magnets, or electromagnets, inside coils of wire producing electricity. Nuclear-powered fire stations use steam to spin electromagnets in coils of wire. Wind turbines, <laughs> hydroelectric power schemes, um, geothermal, they're all basically spinning electromagnets, or even permanent magnets, inside a coil of wire. So for example, um, this is a motor out of a washing machine, but lots of people are pulling these motors out and actually making like wind turbines from them because on the outside, the outside spins and the outside has actually got all these magnets. And so here's a screwdriver that's not, ma well, it's not a magnet, but it's iron. So you can see how it's got all these magnets all around the outside. And basically they use like a, a, a wind turbine to spin this and it spins the magnet across the coils of wire and that produces the electricity. So that's how you can generate electricity using a magnet and a coil of wire. You might have seen this shaker torch. Now have a look, the shaker torch, it's got coils of copper there and on the inside there's a strong magnet that goes backwards and forwards through that coil of wire. So that when I shake it like this, I can produce electricity. Now, pretty stupid, because can you imagine like a robber walking around trying to, you know, steal something generating his own electricity? Pretty dumb. But anyway, that is due to Faraday's law. At the moment, there is no magnetic field through that coil of wire. The magnet goes through and it generates a voltage which produces a current which charges up the little capacitors which then make the light go on. All right, now, you've probably never seen one of these before. Let me just, whoa, look at that. <laughs> you might have seen one of these. You'll see this on like Microsoft Office in the save icon because I'm pretty old school and this used to be one of the discs. Um, this was like a, I think it was like a three and a quarter disc or something like that that used to go into your machine. And this disc here is basically made out of the same sort of magnetic tape ribbon that this is. This has got like tiny little iron particles on it and you know, it's what's called a cassette tape. And basically it goes in the machine, in the cassette recorder, and this tape's got tiny little magnetic particles on it. 
and it's got a reader here with a coil of wire and as those magnetic particles go past that reader it produces little electric currents which are then um, decoded into the music or the sound something like that um, magnetic ribbon so you always wanted to make sure that you didn't put a magnet near these oh look at that it is magnetic ribbon i've never actually done that before wow look wow oh look at that it actually it i didn't know that look at that it is magnetic ribbon i've learned something new today thank you so much um that is, woohoo, that is awesome magnetic ribbon okay that's how you can wipe your magnetic ribbon oh so motors yeah now motors have got magnets in them and coils of wire so if i put a bit of electricity here the thing will spin um i've got a dc motor here but this dc motor is actually set up that i turn the handle and it spins it spins the coil of wire in the magnets now spinning the coil of wire in the magnets that will change the flux through the coil of wire and it will generate a voltage so now i'm going to connect Okay, I'm going to connect one motor to the other motor. And I'm going to use one motor as a generator. So let's see what happens. Attach that to the positive terminal. Attach that to the negative terminal. And hold it like that. And let's turn this handle. Look at that. Look at that. I'm generating electricity. Okay, I'm generating electricity. And if I go the other way, I can make it go the other way. I'm generating electricity by basically spinning a coil of wire inside a magnetic field. Okay, great, moving on. Um, if I go one way, well, if I go one way, the electricity goes in one direction. If I go the other way, the electricity goes in the other direction. So one way, the electricity goes one way, go the other way, the electricity goes the other way. Now, if I turn off the switches, it's actually much easier to turn or spin this little generator. If I put the power back on, it actually takes a fair bit of effort. Now, that's because of Lenz's Law, and we're going to, we're going to come across Lenz's Law in a minute or two, okay? So just relax, and um, we'll get to Lenz's Law. Uh, another application of Faraday's Law is this little two-stroke petrol motor. Now, this is from a, like a whippersnipper, brush cutter, whatever you want to call it. And um, it's got a little piston in here. A little piston goes up and down and fuel goes in and there's a spark plug. There's a spark plug that fires right at the right time to spark the fuel to send the piston down, right? But have you ever wondered what actually causes the spark to spark at the right time? Faraday's law. Have a look over here on this uh, rotating shaft. Um, and this is actually like a bit of a flywheel. It's got a bit of a weight on it. Um, but look at this. Look at this, if I fill with the, whoa, oh, see that? There is a magnet on the flywheel. Only part of it though, there's no magnetism there. There's a magnet there. Up here is like the pickup coil. It's got a coil of wire and have a look. As the magnet goes across it, it changes the magnetic field in that coil of wire and that generates a voltage which produces a spark, okay, produces a spark, which causes the spark in the spark plug to, to fire that piston down. It goes around and then it fires it again. It goes around, fires it again, goes around. And that's how, it, that's how it generates the spark at right the right time. This is like a, a little model generator, okay? Um, it's got a coil of wire. Now, this represents, <laughs> this represents the magnetic field through that coil of wire. Now, at the moment, you could actually like picture the magnetic field a little bit like water in a river. Now, when the, when the coil is horizontal like that, there's basically no water or no magnetic field lines going through it. There's zero magnetic flux. So, if I spin it now, all of a sudden I go from zero magnetic flux up to here, maximum magnetic flux, because all those field lines are now coming through this coil of wire. And that will generate a voltage which will produce a current. And so how do I generate an ongoing voltage? Simply by spinning my coil of wire in the magnetic field. Another way I could do it if I wanted to is actually bring the magnets, okay? Like this, I could actually go, no magnets, maximum magnetic field. No magnetic flux, maximum magnetic flux. And generate electricity like that. 
but I actually find it a lot easier to actually spin my generator like so. Now, I did promise you Lenz's Law, and so I'm going to bring you Lenz's Law. Um, Lenz's Law basically says that when you induce a current in a coil of wire or something like that, the induced current will produce magnetic fields which oppose the change that caused it. So here I've got basically lots and lots of metal coils, like it's a solid aluminium tube, as you could say that's infinite magnetic coils. And um, what I'm gonna, I've got a really strong neodymium magnet, and I'm sure you've seen this before, but when I release the magnet at the top, if you haven't seen it, you might expect it to like just drop, drop through. But let's, oh, ready, set, drop. Takes time, and then, whoa, and then it drops out. Wow, let's time how long it takes. One, and two, and three, and four. It takes like four seconds to drop through. Why is that? That's because at the moment there's no magnetic flux through here, not that you can see it. And as soon as I introduce the magnet, now there's a magnetic flux. There's a change in magnetic flux. And so Faraday's law says that that change in magnetic flux will produce a voltage which will produce a current. So you actually get current flowing in this tube, okay? Now it's probably flowing in the form of what are called eddy currents, but that's beside the point, okay? But you've got basically electricity flowing. Now when you've got electricity flowing, that produces a magnetic field in itself. And the magnetic field produced opposes the change that caused it. And so that's what slows this magnet down. Now, this is actually a conservation of energy. Because when you drop the magnet through, those currents that produce, when you drop the magnet through, those currents that are produced actually produce heat. Now, that heat is a form of energy. Where does it come from? Well, it actually comes from the potential energy of the falling magnet. It actually takes effort to push this magnet through. If, if those currents actually produce magnetic fields that attracted it, well, not only would that accelerate this, but it would also generate heat, and so there'd be like energy coming from somewhere, who knows where. So Lenz's law, I'll say it again, that when there is an induced current, it produces a magnetic field that opposes the magnet that caused it. Last but not least, this is probably one of my little favorite demos. I've got a very strong magnet here, very strong magnet out of a hard disk drive and a piece of aluminium. Now, the aluminium is not magnetic, but interestingly, if I move it quickly, it actually feels like, it feels like there's some type of resistance. So it actually does feel magnetic when I move it. And of course, because that's a metal, basically lots of loops of wire, that's a magnet, and so my, I'm actually generating electrical currents in this metal. Now let me show you Lenz's law. I've got this swinging, I've got that swinging, and I'm going, I'm going, to, bring, I'm going to bring this in without touching it. So I might just move it out a bit like that. I'm going to bring it in without touching it, and let's have a look. As it goes by, you look, you look how quickly, you look how quickly it comes to rest there. That's because the induced currents produce a magnetic field that oppose the change that caused it. And so this is a form of electromagnetic braking, um, which can be used in trains and fun rides and that sort of stuff. Super, super cool. But basically, that's Faraday's law and Lenz's law. So thanks heaps for joining me today. I'm Jake from Make Science Fun. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, I found it helpful. Please subscribe and uh, I'm sure I'll catch you again soon. Bye for now.